Coming up on DTNS, it's our listener co-host episode, our favorite co-hosts. We find out what our grandmasters think about DTNS. This is the Daily Tech News Show for Tuesday, December 28th, 2021 in Los Angeles. I'm Tom Merritt. And from Studio Redwood, I'm Sarah Lane. And I'm Roger Chang, the show's producer. Welcome to our end of year listener co-host show, our annual episode where we invite a few of our supporters to appear alongside us on the show. This year, we invited the Patreon Grandmasters on board. Uh, not all of them were able to make it, of course, uh, but we are very lucky to get IT project manager Norm Fazikas. Welcome, Norm. Hey, Norm. Hello. Hi. And IT professional and photographer Steve Iadarola. Welcome back, Steve. Hello. I say back because we say both your names a lot on the show, but yeah, this is actually the first time you've been on the show, right? Uh, actually, my second. Uh, probably about three years ago, I was on one of the call-in shows. So. Oh, so it, that that was instinctual uh, of me, remembering that. I see. Perfect. <laughs> I shouldn't have said anything. Just rolled with it. Uh, Glad to be great. here. It's great to have you both. Uh, we love uh, we love having listeners on the show, and we're so happy that the schedules worked out that you could uh, talk to us. Uh, Sarah, we, we're so appreciative of, of these two fine folks and everybody who supports our show. Yeah, we really are. Um, so Norm, let's start with you, uh, you frequent, uh, uh, contributor to feedback on the show, which we so, so appreciate, but, uh, let's learn a little bit more about you and what you do and how technology affects your life. Sure. Well, I'm currently an IT project manager and I say currently it's been like almost all my life. I've been drawn to technology from a, as a youth. I started off programming on an Apple IIe, and then uh, besides playing games, and then thought I knew it all, and then went off to college and got pulled back into programming and did a lot of dot-com consulting, and that's pretty much it. So what, what, what do we talk about on the show that resonates with you the most? Well, I think it's the way you guys talk to the the... the to everyone, this is that you don't dumb down. You don't. You assume that we're educated already. We know if there's a new subject, you'll let us know about it. But at the same time, um, you don't need to do a long intro to each of the subjects, which I really, really enjoy. But what really I enjoy is the, um, the camaraderie between the whole team. That's really my my favorite part of it all. You guys get along so much, uh, so well. And then GDI is like you know, I look forward to it every day. Hearing you guys talk about everything, you know, between the food and the <laughs> um, you know, sports and everything has really been, it's really kind of a, you know, fills in my day. So I really appreciate it. I think that's one of the hardest things to dis to describe to people sometimes when, th when they're unfamiliar, they're like, well, you have a, a 30 minute, like pretty buttoned down technology discussion show. Uh, and then you have this other thing around it where you talk about, you know, cannibalism and etymology and, you know, <laughs> you know uh, all over One the day we talked about cannibalism. One day. I know. We're going to be talking about that the end of, of our it. lives. Uh, so so I, I think a lot of people are like, well, I don't know if I'd like that. Were you like, did you at first think like, I don't know about this GDI thing and, and then just kind of, was it an acquired taste, I guess, is what I'm asking? Yeah, kind of like human flesh. It was uh, yeah, acquired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, um... And I can't remember how I actually it happened. I think I, I think I didn't sign up for it initially, uh, but I started listening to it, and then it just was like it filled in my day because um, for the longest time I was actually not um, working um, in an office, so having this kind of water cooler talk was it was really needed in my my life. And then and plus it's not like you guys steer off into you know controversial t topic. It's like you know pies and um, and you know food and things like that. But anyway, I can relate to. Yeah, the pie talk can get fairly controversial if we let it. Well, as long as you're not putting cheese on anything. And yeah. Norm, not that you know you you can talk about it as much as you want to, or or as little as you want to. But what what is your day to day? You know what what's your IT life for anybody who's like, what is he doing all day? Well, I do a lot of um, this is support of IT, so just kind of. Project management, we're telling people what to do. So right now I do um, a lot of work with um, radio towers. We're building, trying to build out some radio towers here in the Central Valley. We try to uh, help coordinate that work. And uh, also, um, I'm actually relatively new to um, local government, so trying to get the ins and outs of that. I came from the private sector before. I worked for a, a large telecom company. So kind of like getting to know the ins and outs of local governments and a little bit different. 
I think one of the one of the things I, I hope for DTNS is that it it is somewhat of a crossroads uh, where we're we're at the intersection of lots of stuff and we know a little about everything. So if you don't know about uh, central bank digital currencies or 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 NFTs or something, we can we can kind of give you enough to to know whether you're interested in it or not or understand it a little better. But I know every single person in our audience has a higher expertise in their thing than we'll ever have. Uh, and so I love that that everybody's willing to share that. Is there a thing that that you think about sometimes and are like, you know, I I know this, uh, and I wish more people understood it. Well, I know a lot about uh, space um, and SpaceX and rockets, things like that, which you guys don't talk about all the time. But if you you did, then I'd probably, you know, be on the show like all the time. Um, I'm a big <laughs> fan of that, so I try to go see you know rocket launches and whatever I out, now that they're doing them on in, um, on the Central Coast. I can go take a look at those, um, but not really. I mean, you guys give such a, a broad view of things. It's, it's really helpful. And um, my stuff is pretty rudimentary. It's, it's all back end stuff typically um, besides these radio towers are just, you know, pretty front end. But uh, I really appreciate just the wide, um, wide pattern of the topics you guys cover. Cool. Cool. When, when you're saying radio towers, is, is it like for, for cellular connections or what kind of radio are no. you talking about? Emergency services. Ah, gotcha. Okay. Oh, that's mm. that, that, that's yeah, that's super important stuff to make sure <laughs> yeah. you get it right. Comes up often. In fact, yeah. all over the world. Yeah, uh, certainly in California where I live. Is there is there anything, Norm, that uh, you thought would be, I don't know, a uh, you know a, a a a hot topic on DTNS that you didn't hear? Or something, you know, that we talked about that surprised you? Well, I think it's actually the opposite. Is there stuff I'll hear about, like, like I, I know I've emailed Tom about this, like the, the Theranos trial. Like, it's like, you guys just don't take, like, what, again, being the educated um, consumers that you guys are speaking to, you guys don't, uh, we don't need to hear about Theranos from you guys. You guys find things that I haven't heard about and make it approachable and then make you want to dig into it more. So I, that's, that's that's fantastic about it. Ah, uh, stop! Yeah, you I, tell I, me what I want to hear. That, that that's great. I know. <laughs> I know. We're it's, doing it, everything it, which, right. Well, that's what it's. It's. I don't. It's. I wish I could give you guys some like you know negative feedback. I mean, you guys, <laughs> you, you guys learn how to pronounce my last you ha- name. You have. Yeah. You uh, you you take <laughs> questions for people named Nick and Norm, um, and uh, you guys have just great camaraderie and get along well. Uh, you have all those guys from Ohio that helped the, the team out, which I I don't know if I can. You know, you know, a little too close originally. to Michigan for you. Yeah, yeah, a little bit too close to yeah. Michigan. But, I know but we've got that, some rivalry going on in our audience. I'm trying to get someone happens. from the Upper Peninsula to to come on, but he's a busy guy, so it's kind of been hard to get him. Yeah, so I know several of those people, but they're kind of littering the tech. They're usually holed up. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, before we move on and, ch- and chat with Steve, uh, do you have any questions for us, Norm? Well, I think there's a. I want to know if there was anything you guys thought maybe in the past year or the past several years of your careers that you thought was to become like a, a bigger topic than it became. Like for me, like back in 2001, uh, at the build up for the, the, the announcement for the segue, I thought was, I thought it was like, it was going to be a huge thing. And then it came up and I was like, what the heck is this thing? It turned out to be you know, nothing after not nearly as big as they thought it was going to revolutionize cities. Is there anything like that for me to you guys that, um, hmm. Tom, you want to start? Sure, sure. I'll go first. Uh, I, I've been uh, beaten down so many times in it with expectations over the years that, that I, I've learned never to expect anything is going to be all that big. Uh, the The early thing that I re- the last thing I remember being truly excited about and then turned into nothing was ultra mobile PCs. Do you remember those? The UMPCs uh, back around two thousand four or so. Uh, they were they were you know, modified, I, I don't know if they were quite embedded, but they were modified versions of like Windows uh, running on small handheld uh, devices that were like all all of the things you can do on a, on a regular PC in a, in a mobile format. And at the time, I was just fascinated with it. But I think I was fascinated in the way you're fascinated when you see a small thing, uh, a small version, you know, like dollhouse size versions of things. You're like, oh, that's so weird and cute. Uh, it didn't end up being usable for anything because uh, it was it was bigger than a, what were the P- PDAs at the time, uh, but it was it was not 
powerful enough to actually do what ultralight laptops eventually came to be. I think phablets became what I thought ultra moldable PCs would become eventually. So maybe we did get them, but that was the last one that, that I got really disappointed that it just fell flat. Uh, there, you know, there's things like VR where I've thought, well, this might, this might go, uh, there's, there's, there's things, uh, trying to think if there's anything even more recently uh, that, but none that I can think of that, that really fell f flat. That just didn't, didn't go anywhere at all. Sarah, what about you? Um, well, you know, you mentioned VR. I'm, I'm so bullish on VR. I, I, it's my favorite thing. <laughs> I just couldn't tell you that I was going to feel that way two years ago, but I do. What I think that I am, I'm disappointed in, and it's not because the technology isn't still moving forward, because it is, but drone delivery. The idea that drones will fly through the sky, possibly ca carrying humans or goods, e either one, all's well, and getting us off the streets and into the sky to give people the things that they need. Burritos. In my case, it would be a burrito. Absolutely. I, I just, we've been talking about this for years and it yeah. is so in the early days still. And sure, there, there was no way that, you know, you would be able to say like, oh, a drone can just like land in someone's backyard. It's like totally depends on where you live. And th there's mm. so many issues there. But I thought we'd be farther along by now. I, w I was really kind of looking forward to like the robots on the sky. Batteries is another one. Battery tech, I thought by 2021, if you would have asked me in 2006, I'd say, oh yeah, by 2021, we won't be using lithium ion batteries anymore. Well, we'll have figured something cool out uh, by then. Uh, that, that one has definitely disappointed. That was a slow burning disappointment and literally burning in some cases. So, well, you know. You just recharge them. <laughs> as long as they're they're not toast. <laughs> All right, Steve, you've been patiently waiting. Thank you. Uh, I, I promise that I didn't make you go second because you're wearing a Bruins hat. That is just the way Roger uh, made the lineup before we ever saw. <laughs> we, we leave our, our sports uh, partisanship at the door on the show. Uh, but uh, tell us how, what you do in tech. How does technology play a role in your life? So my full-time job, I manage a data center and the information security operations for a small to mid-sized pharmaceutical company just outside of Boston. Um, my day-to-day -day is far and wide, pretty much everything about the infrastructure. I like to tell people I'm the mechanic who greases the wheel so people can get their internet and you know email and everything in between uh, throughout the whole stack to, to be able to have all the, the systems on the internet and all of our employees um, work. So it, that encompasses not only the, the servers, the data center, network, um, wireless, and you know, in, in my type of organization, we're still smaller, even though we're about a 200 person organization, everybody is still a service desk employee. So when folks have a problem, it doesn't matter who you are, you're part of IT, so fix this. So, so that's pretty much what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Uh, most recently, um, I've been in the process of building out a, a 800, uh, I'm sorry, 80,000 square foot new facility. Um, so everything that's involved with getting that up and running from IT, AV, and, and all sorts, all along with continuing to do my day-to-day -day stuff. Do you think that the technology literacy that we've seen increase, you know, as more people get on the internet, more people use smartphones, do you think it has permeated into I, the IT world, the IT support world? In, in other words, do people have a better understanding of what you do or is it still like, I don't know what's wrong, just fix it? That's a good question. I, I think it's about 50-50. There, one of the things that I'm definitely seeing is the uh, digital natives who are who have grown up with you know computers and, and technology. They tend to grasp things a lot quicker uh, than some of the older generation that are, are still in the workforce. Um, but there are plenty of younger employees who don't have any idea about anything technology related. You know, we can have folks who just graduated college and they don't even know how to, you know, work their cell phone or log into a computer. And mm. most of those folks have all grown up using 
um, either iPads or tablets. So mm. for them, it's actually uh, a challenge sometimes to use in the a corporate system like Outlook or you know something like that. SharePoint, nobody really understands, but you know it is what it is. I mean, you you mentioned you you're uh, managing a smaller company and that you know 200 employees. Certainly, there are larger uh, companies. Seems like a pretty big company, though. Uh, what what do you find? Not to call anybody out, but what do you find is the is the thing that you have to quote fix the most? Um, honestly, I think it's mostly around security issues and uh, education of the workforce they you know just because you get a spam email or a phishing email that looks like it's from Amazon or you know DocuSign or some other corporate company doesn't mean you have to click on everything so it's a constant battle with educating the workforce and continuing to um, keep all those security issues at bay and, and just patching in general uh, across a, a workforce that's for the last two years has basically been mobile. You know, prior to the pandemic, we were all in one building and we didn't have as many issues, um, but now everybody's mobile. So how do you get those yeah. devices up and patched and maintain them when we have folks who haven't been in the office in two years. So it's, it's those remote management issues that are, are yeah. challenging. There, there's kind of no perimeter really right now. There's not. We've been fortunate that prior to the pandemic, we set up our organization to anticipate something like this. And we, everybody basically had a laptop and we had everybody being able to connect remotely to do their jobs. Uh, however, in our industry, uh, because we have labs and lab space, we still have a significant portion of folks who had to come in to the office. But, mm -hmm. you know, we were fortunate. We were kind of a little bit ahead of the game when the pandemic hit. Um, so we just had to do a quick pivot and we got up and running a lot quicker than a lot of these other companies who never anticipated anything like this or were still uh, the type of company that was on site, punching a clock every day. They don't have remote access. Well, uh, we're curious. We're very thankful that, that you're a listener and a supporter of Daily Tech News Show. But but tell us a little bit about how you got into the show. Uh, I got into the show probably, I, I think I started following you at the tail end of the Buzz Out Loud days and um, followed you over to Twit TV. Really enjoyed that uh, format. And um, when you brought this on, I think I was right there. I, I don't think right at the beginning I signed up for the Patreon, but I was definitely, you know, watching and listening and trying to contribute where I could um, with the Reddit and, and all that stuff. Uh, and I decided to finally become a uh, Patreon because I felt as though the format helped not only myself uh, in my day-to-day -day job, but I, I felt that it added value to um, the industry and, and it was just a, a great, great show. No, thanks. Uh, that, that, that's yeah. lovely to hear. Uh, I, I'm curious if you also listen to GDI, the Good Day Internet, or just DTNS. It, I do. No wrong right? answers. Uh, no, I, I, I pretty much listen to it all <laughs> as much as I can. Um, do you I, like I'm, pie? I, I do. I do. Okay. I, I'm, I'm more of a chocolate cream pie person, but blueberry is good, and mm. apple is, you know, the old standby. <laughs> um, so as far as GDI goes, yes, I, I listen to it. Um, and it's actually, you know, I'm, I'm sure you've probably heard this before, but I've been supporting you for years and you've become basically part of my daily routine. And I listen to GDI and, you know, it's silly. I, I know that we're, we're not really friends outside of this, but I feel like you're all my friends, you know, following along, listening. Um, and, and it feels like it's, a part of the show, even though I'm not. So uh, it, it is, it's a big part and it's uh, fun and interesting. Well, the, thanks. The conversations well, are great. First of all, you are a part of the show. Exactly. Um, you're very yeah. much a part of the show, uh, you know, outside of today, uh, because we couldn't, we couldn't do it without your feedback, but it is nice. It is nice to know that sometimes on our wildest GDI days, people are, <laughs> 
having fun, you know, it's, and we're, we're all in it together. Absolutely. That, that's what makes it enjoyable too. the, the different conversations and they go all these different places. And, you know, as Tom said, the, the topics are far and wide. Yeah. We also have no perimeter. on <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, we asked Norm this too. Uh, so, so Steve, do you have any questions that you wanted to ask us? Yeah, it, it's a little bit similar to, to Norm's, but slight twist. Um, I was interested to see what current or emerging technologies uh, you're, you're both most passionate or excited about and what your hopes are for where that technology may lead us in the future. And, you know, I, I know Sarah's already mentioned it. She's all about the VR and, you know, talking about her VR experiences uh, on GDI. Um, you know, things like blockchain, NFTs, autonomous vehicles, drone delivery. Um, th those are kind of where my mind was was going. But I'm, I'm curious. I don't think we get to hear all that often from, from you folks. What excites you about technology? You report on it every day. But what gets you going? Well, uh, you mentioned VR. And I, I sound like a broken record, I know. But, I mean, VR has been... You know, getting a quest, the uh, the the first quest, not the quest two, the original quest, as one of my live with it segments, where I live with it for three months, take a bunch of notes, let everybody know about it, was by far the best thing I ever did, and I wouldn't have done it otherwise. I just wouldn't have done. I would have been like, ah, I don't, I don't need to play games in VR. Um, there's so much more to it to me, and. I do a lot of exercising apps, not as of late, but you know, in in a in a perfect world, that's actually a daily fun thing that I that I, that I I never want to not do. But um, I say the quest because I feel like the quest is sort of the only consumer uh, player out there um, on any level, and that's gonna change. That is going to change, and I hope it changes soon. And I hope it makes the whole the whole space a lot different. And I know that it isn't going to appeal to everybody, but uh, it is truly, you know, we speak about the pandemic. Let's be honest. There's been some escapism that's been really nice for me. But uh, yeah, I'm uh, I'm I'm stoked on VR in the future. You're, on, you're, you're trying one. not to say metaverse, are you, aren't you? It's the quest, Tom. <laughs> the meta. I don't uh, No, I actually hate that term, to be honest yeah, with you. No, it's the worst. It's, it's, it's just so stupid. I'm not going to say metaverse, uh, mostly because, yes, I, I kind of hate all the, the, the FUD around it. Uh, also, I don't want to like. I want to say something different than what you just said, but but I think the part of what people mean when they say a metaverse, the very small part where they're talking about virtual worlds and escapism and all that, I'm 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 with you. I'm 100 percent with you. Like that's just going to get better, and there's just going to be more uh, opportunities to do it. So yeah. Um, yeah, um, yeah. I mean, the whole idea of like, well, you can you know play a shooter game or fly through the world. You know, it's like. You know, what that those are cool. Those things are cool. But there's going to be more of a like real life, especially both you and Norm, uh, y you, Steve and Norm, um, talking about working remotely and managing folks, how this is actually going to just be a solution in the future. I don't totally see it yet, but I think I think that's where we're headed. Yeah, there might be a way. My, mine actually uh, ties a little bit into that. Uh, I, I think I'm excited. There's lots of things that I can say like, well, this is going to be big next year and this is something to keep an eye on. And you hear that as part of every Daily Tech News show. But one of the things I probably don't talk as much about uh, is how how I think intelligent assistance is going to get a lot better. Uh, we, we hear a lot about AI, uh, not enough about machine learning, but a lot about AI. But even then we hear a lot about machine learning and we hear a lot about the promise and we hear a lot of, lot of like, ah, this is what it can do. This is what it will do, which maybe it will never do. We hear a lot about the fears about what it might do that's unintended. And we hear about the thing that it, it can't do in, in your current Amazon Echo or Google Home or Siri or, or whatever. I think the big revelation is going to be 
the machine learning uh, hitting hitting that hockey stick of improvement. Uh, we we haven't quite come ac- uh, around the curve on that, but I I think even with the restrictions on data that are properly applied uh, to these, they're going to keep getting trained and keep getting feedback and keep getting better as, as they're used. And I think there's going to be a moment when we're suddenly all going to say, man, these, these intelligent assistants, they're good and they're easy to use. And now I can just speak to them normally. And I think that's going to get better and better and lead into ambient computing uh, where, where you aren't always thinking of computing as or as being the thing that you're picking up as the device, but just being around you. Uh, whether that's knowing your home and, and turning the lights on because it's learned your pattern, uh, or you just being able to say, where did I put the oil? And the assistant can say, it's in cabinet to your left because it knows where you are. I think that's the kind of thing that we're headed toward that I'm I'm really, really excited about. Just making, basically what I'm saying is anything that's going to make my life easier, <laughs> you know? Oh, so, truly. Yeah. yeah. I actually have a uh, a smart bulb that's making my life very much not easier because it now just... Because um, it's not living in that wonderful future that I'm imagining yet. No, yeah. and it's got a life of its own, but it, I don't know. It's it's <laughs> something to tinker with over the weekend kind of thing. Yeah. That can be fun. It can. And it... Do- and it Hopefully it will be. Do you, uh, we didn't prepare you for this, but Norm or Steve, do you have any questions for each other uh, that, that you would want to ask uh, before we, we wind this up? Uh, You've probably heard of one another, having been part of the show for some time. Um, Seem, seems like you live in somewhat parallel universes. Yeah, Steve seems like a lot more fun than mine. Um, Steve actually had a comment. Um, we had some people that with, with the pandemic, bringing back a devices from like, they had like Windows 98 and Windows NT on it. Like they pull them out of the closet, thought they'd just start putting back on. It's like, um, I don't know if you had any experience with that because it's, it's uh, the IT folks on my side were not really <laughs> happy with that. So do you have any weird things come out of the closet with the, with the, with the people that were shut down that should have been on the network? I haven't yet. Um, we're still mostly remote. And most of all the uh, equipment we issue is on the latest you know, Windows 10 type versions. So I'm, I'm hopeful we don't run into anything like that. Well, good luck. You know. Fingers crossed. Thank yeah. you. Thank you. And then likewise, I, Steve, anything back at Norm? I, I, I don't, uh, Norm. Sorry, I wasn't prepared for that. But, um, you know, we, 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 we weren't circles, trying to, we weren't yeah. trying to gotcha. Throw right. shade on the Red Wings or something. No, I don't know. No, anything. no, no. Hey, I'm, I'm a huge hockey fan. You know, I, I root for the Bruins cause it's the home team, but I follow four or five different teams. So it's all about the hockey. And the Red Wings aren't one of them. That's a shame for you. They, they're an original six. I always try and go to the uh, Red Wings games when they play in Boston. Okay. I'll give you that. <laughs> I was well, there the other to- night. <laughs> I have to say, both Steve and Norm, it's always nice to see uh, someone's personal setup, and we all have the remote setups now. Um, well, not all of us, but many do. Steve, I am very into your cabinets. Oh, well, those <laughs> they are, are beautiful. <laughs> oh, I love them. They're great. And Thanks. Norm, I can't see some of the art behind you, but it looks like you're in a pretty fun room. Yeah, it's a bunch of, uh, speaking of hockey, there's a hockey picture back there. There's a basketball one and Barry Sanders uh, framed thing up oh, yeah. there. And, and then uh, I've got a my great aunt's uh, rocking chair behind me that's been reupholstered. Aw, cool. There. Oh, it's beautiful. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that's gorgeous. Very nice. I don't use it too much when I'm working. <laughs> if, if my bosses are hearing yeah, me. You know, it's there if you want it. It's decorative. Yeah. It's to yeah. inspire you. Well, thank you, sir. Yeah. Well, you're welcome. Um, well, yeah. Thank you to you both. Um, Norm, we'll, we'll, we'll start with you if you'd like to, folks to know where they can keep up with what you do outside of being part of DTNS and GDI and, and the family here. I, I know that uh, you use Untapped. Um, yes. So, so. So is, is that the best place for folks to connect with you? It really is. I don't do social media. I gave up Facebook like 10 years ago. Um, no offense to anybody who's Facebook. Just not no, have time, have time to you. for it. And then um, Twitter, I think I have an account, but I don't use it. I just drink beer and 
and uh, enjoy it. But I'm not chasing after my children. Yeah, Untapped is one time, of the great social networks because people are just like talking about beer to each other, you know? Yeah, That's, keep it simple. Yeah. Right? So uh, your untapped username is N Physicus. Uh, if anybody um, also likes beer and wants to connect with Norm, um, but uh, but yeah, it, it, kudos to to saying I don't like social media. Not everybody does, and turns out uh, you can you can definitely be part of the conversation and not be part of all platforms. And I think that's pr pretty cool. Thank you. I've yet to click on a TikTok link, so I feel pretty special about that. So. I have to click on way fewer TikTok I, links. I know. I offset you, Sarah. Way fewer. Thank you. Yes. Good. TikTok good. offsets. Thank, See that thank you for bringing me Sarah, down, right. down from the clouds. Uh, Steve Ayadarola, also uh, such a pleasure to have you on the show. Uh, let folks know where they can uh, they can connect with you. Yeah, the easiest place is probably Twitter. Uh, I'm at Steve I. I was an early adopter and was able to get a short name. So. Uh, that's probably the best spot. And I, um, if anyone's interested in some of the photography uh, that I do, you can probably find that off of my about.me uh, slash Steve I. Excellent. And thank you for being here. It was a pleasure. Uh, Steve, Norm, thank you both uh, for for supporting us at, at such a strong level. Uh, it, it it humbles us uh, to ha to have you give that vote of confidence to us. That that goes for you and every other person. Uh, on Patreon Indeed. as well. So, so special direct thanks to both of you uh, for that. Uh, it, it's, it's all combining to, to make it possible for us to do this. And, and we're super lucky that we're headed into our eighth year of daily uh, tech news show uh, because of you. So, so thank you uh, for that. If you would like to join Steve and Norm uh, in that effort, dailytechnewsshow.com slash Patreon, uh, dailytechnewsshow.com slash support, either one, they go to the same place, uh, we'll get you to our Patreon. And don't forget, uh, you don't have to spend New Year's Eve alone. Every year, Ritual Misery presents the Diamond Club New Year's Eve streamathon. 27 hours of raising money for sick kids through extralife.org. And Sarah and I are coming back. We did it last year. We're doing it again this year. Doing it uh, again. Yeah. Join us on New Year's Eve at 2330 UTC. That's 1530 Pacific. Uh, for good year, internet uh, will be part of the New Year's Eve streamathon. You can find all the details for that at ritualmisery.com slash streamathon. Just a reminder that our email address is feedback at dailytechnewsshow.com, and we love your feedback. Please do keep it coming. You, you make the show what it is. We're also live Monday through Friday regularly at 4.30 p.m. Eastern, 21.30 UTC. You can find out more at dailytechnewsshow.com slash live. We'll see you tomorrow with our best of 2021 GDI. This show is part of the Frog Pants Network. Get more at frogpants.com. Diamond Club hopes you have enjoyed this program. <laughs>